Hi everyone. As you all know, we're due to reopen on the 1st of September, which is just a few weeks away. But we're still unfortunately faced with living with the risk of COVID-19. We've been working hard to prepare a plan to ensure that we can reopen as planned in a safe and responsible way. And I wanted to reach out to all of you to explain what that plan will look like. We have carefully examined all of the guidance for both outer school settings, which applies directly to EKSS, and for the reopening of schools and other guidance as well to ensure that we're following the best possible practice and have carried out a detailed risk assessment looking at all aspects of our provision in relation to COVID-19. And from that, put together a COVID-19 prevention and response policy and procedure. I'm going to be providing you all with the policy in full to read through, but it's a lengthy document with a lot of detail. So we thought that we'd cover the main points in a video to give you and your children a good idea of what this year will look like at EKSS. And then you can refer to the policy whenever you need more information. Of course, if after watching this video and looking through the policy you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. We'll be contacting you all personally over the next week anyway to check in with how you feel about the plan and to get your feedback. But before I get into all of the restrictions and rules we'll have to follow, I just want to take a moment to say that we really appreciate you coming on this journey with us. When we were looking for the perfect building to move into, we never expected hand washing routines and room occupancy limits to be a part of that. We treasure freedom and democracy. So having limits on what kids can and can't do, such as who they can play with and how closely, and rules imposed from external guidelines is not what we want to be doing. But like every other business and facet of life right now, we have to adapt to the situation we are in. And this is a unique opportunity for us to all grapple with what it means to take responsibility for yourself and the community you are a part of, which is also a value that we hold dear. All of our students are amazing. They are fantastically adaptable and resilient, and I'm certain that they will rise to the challenge of maintaining a safe community and when we are finally able to go back to normal, it will feel even more special than ever. So what does our plan look like? We have based our plan around the government's nine key principles for managing the risk of COVID-19 in educational settings. These points are, one, minimize contact with individuals who are unwell. Quite simple really, do not attend EKSS if you have symptoms of COVID-19 feel unwell or someone in your household has symptoms. Two, maintain clean hands. Everyone will need to wash their hands on arrival, before leaving, before and after eating and after using the bathroom. They'll also need to sanitise or wash hands between activities and when changing rooms. We'll have sanitizers set up outside every door for this purpose. We'll also provide training on how to clean hands effectively as well as have reminder posters in bathrooms. Three, ensure good respiratory hygiene. We'll be making sure everyone knows how to cough and sneeze safely. Tissues and pedal bins will be provided throughout as well as reminder, catch it, bin it, kill it posters. Four, enhanced cleaning. High touch areas such as door handles, work surfaces, bathrooms and kitchen will be cleaned twice a day Everyone will need to clean their own workplace space and resources after use. Five, minimize contact between individuals. Now, there are two main ways that we can do this by limiting the number of contacts anyone has by placing people in small consistent groups and by keeping a distance from people and we'll be employing both tactics. Students will be divided into autonomous groups of no more than 15 students with dedicated staff members. This means that students will only have contact with others in their group. There'll be dedicated rooms and resources for each group, and we've planned the spaces to ensure safe movement around the building and minimise contact. Those over 11 who can maintain a social distance from others will also be expected to do so. Six, where necessary, wear PPE. It will be very rare that anyone at EKSS needs to wear a mask or other PPE. But where close contact is required for care, such as giving first aid, staff will wear appropriate levels of PPE. 
If students want to wear masks for their own peace of mind, they can do that. 7. Test and trace. Anyone with symptoms will need to isolate for 10 days and seek a test. We'll provide you with information on where and how to get a test. You must let us know if anyone in your house tests positive. We'll be liaising with NHS test and trace where necessary. 8. Manage confirmed cases. We will safely isolate anyone who develops symptoms whilst at EKSS and arrange for them to go home as soon as possible. If someone tests positive that has been at EKSS in the past 10 days, their contacts, which will mean their group, will be asked to self-isolate for 14 days. 9. Contain any outbreak. If an outbreak at EKSS is suspected or there is a local outbreak in the area, EKSS may have to close temporarily. Students will be provided with online provision when isolating at home. Okay, so now let's have a look a bit closer at what this will look like and mean for you and your children. Grouping. Without a doubt, the single hardest decision was to group students. This just feels so against our ethos, but it is a government requirement that all out of school settings have to follow also gives our students more freedom to socialise within their groups by keeping the number of contacts small. We want life within each group to feel as much like normal as possible. So students will still be able to use whatever resources they want, move freely between rooms, play and work with their friends. We've drawn up gr draft groupings and made every effort to keep small, to keep close friends together and where new students are joining to make sure there is someone of a similar age or that they are likely to get on well with within their group. If you have a preference about who you would like to be grouped with, then please let us know and we'll do our best to accommodate it. We can also arrange, rearrange the groupings uh, so that you can spend more time with different people after holiday breaks. Each group will be autonomous, meaning it will have its own group meeting and JC and be able to make decisions that affect the group only. Where the group wants to take decisions that affect everyone, representatives of each group will meet either virtually or outside to discuss it. Travelling. We have to ask you where possible to walk, cycle or travel to EKSS by private car. If you need to use public transport, let us know so we are aware of the increased risk and please do follow the guidance on safe travel. If you need to share a car with someone to get to EKSS, keep to consistent groups and let us know so that we can place those students within the same groups. Also, make sure you keep the car well ventilated. Adults and children aged 11 and over should wear face coverings and that you clean the car after use. I'm afraid it isn't going to be safe for us to run the minibus service at the start of the autumn term, but we will keep that decision under review and change it as soon as it is safe to do so. Pick up and drop off. Our pick up and drop off times are already flexible, but to try and spread everyone out a little more, we'll ask you to choose a time slot to arrive and pick up within. Each group will have their own entrance. We'll let you know which is yours. When you come to pick up, it's really important that you don't gather around the doors. Stay in or near your car and signal to us and we'll send your child out to you. Or if you need to come up to the door, keep two metres from others around you. Staying home. The guidance around when you should stay at home can be confusing at best. On the whole, our policy is better safe than sorry right now. So if you feel unwell, even if you're sure it's just a cold, stay home until you're better. In the COVID policy, you'll find a table that outlines what you should do in various circumstances. Hopefully that will be a good go-to reference for everyone. But when in doubt, call us and ask. Learning from home. Whilst we would all prefer to be together at EKSS than at home, and we're aiming to be open in person as much as possible, there is likely go going to be times when some students will be at home because they're self-isolating, or we might all need to stay home again for a short period during a localised lockdown. We're seeing this as an opportunity to innovate and devise what self-directed democratic education at home looks like, and we'll be improving on our previous provision to ensure everyone at home for any reason still feels part of the community and supported by staff in their learning. Questions? Alana, you've just been listening to all of that from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. 
What questions do you have or do you think others might have about what this is going to look like? Well, there's one thing that I'd really like to know. Will I be with my friends? We are going to try really hard to keep friends together and where we know that there are best friends or special friendships, we're going to try and keep those people together. So, yes. But will you be with everyone you're friends with? Probably not, because that's probably like everyone. So there will be some people that you wish you were with that are in the other group, and that's we just can't do anything about that. What if I want to propose a law to the school meeting? Because obviously there are two groups, and um, if I do one, if I propose a rule, for example, um, can we buy some potted plants in this room or something? because it feels a little less green. Um, and then if everyone does vote for it, the other group obviously isn't there. So um, what if they're not okay with that? Do all the rules affect only one group or both? That's a great question. So each group is gonna effectively be autonomous, which means that it can decide things that only affect itself. And each group will have its own budget and a mini law book and its own JC. So if your group wants pot plants and wants to spend money on that and the other group doesn't, that's fine. You can have different, take different decisions. But if you want to make a decision that affects everyone, like you want to put plants in all of the rooms, then your group would decide to put that proposal forwards and then representatives from your group and the other group will come together either outside where it's safe or virtually via Zoom to represent the wishes of the two groups. Okay, but what happens after when all the when the two groups form again together and become one again? Um, what if the two groups realize, wait, where did those plants come from? And then um, the like, and then everyone else is um, well, we agreed it in our school meeting, and then they say, but we didn't agree with that, and then they all get mad at each other and start arguing. Okay, well. Things that you've bought, resources, money that you've spent um, before the, lo the whole COVID situation clears up is money spent. That's just like um, if you're a student that wasn't here when um, we bought a sewing machine. And maybe you wouldn't have chosen to buy a sewing machine, but it's here now, so it's done. Um, but if you've made separate rules, then when we come back together, we'll need to have a meeting to decide which rules we keep from which groups, um, which ones we get rid of, and so on. So we'll re-amalgamate everything at the end. Wouldn't that take a long time? I don't think it'll take that long. Okay. Do I have to clean everything after um, I use it? You have to clean everything you've used. So if you sat at a table to draw a picture, you'll need to wipe the table and the pens. And this might seem like a real pain and a lot of work, but it's because anyone else could come along and pick that pen up and we want to reduce the possible transmission as much as possible. Taps and things that get touched frequently, very, very briefly, are going to get cleaned by staff twice a day. So no, you don't have to wipe the tap every time you use it. But anything like brushes, um, piano, um, computers, things like that. If someone else is going to use it after you, if it isn't just your own property that only you are using, then you will need to give it a little wipe. And we will provide uh, spray, cloths and wipes for this purpose in every room. Okay. Okay. Um, which... Which group will share, which group will have the outside? Because there are, there are two outsides in this new building we've got. And um, one of them is pretty small and one of them is pretty big, but who will have the big one? Yeah, so um, in the policy, you'll find a floor plan, which is a draft floor plan. It's not set in stone yet. We want to see what everybody thinks about it. <laughs> um, but we've basically given each group one of the green spaces each, which are of similar sizes. And then the large playground area will be shared by both groups, but you will just need to keep well away from each other when you use the playground. So you will see members of the other group, either in the playground or sometimes if you're passing in the hall. But when you see people from the other group, you need to keep two metres away from them and not make physical contact. Will we be able to maybe put a Zoom 
computer computer with zoom on it um at the side of two rooms so that um we can communicate together and always just always have that there i think that's a really lovely idea and i think that's the kind of thing you could propose to your group and if both groups want that then i don't see why not okay so what happens if one group has some little kids and so do the other like some young kids that like playing with toys like dragons or something like really special toys that they that the schools what they really like playing with what if those toys are kept in a particular room that is in a different for, for, that belongs to a different group that isn't your group so all of the things that are used frequently like lego blocks um pens paper um like small plastic animals we have enough of those things that both groups can have their own set um, if there is something that's like a one-off, that's super special, that both groups would like to have one of, you can buy another one. Um, if there's something that is really expensive, like the sewing machine, that we only have one of, then that will be kept in a separate space that isn't assigned to a group, and the groups can effectively take it out like a library, but they'll have to clean it before they put it back. But as much as possible, will keep resources within each group. Okay. Okay, so that's it. You made it to the end. Thanks for sticking through that. If you have any other questions, let me know and we'll be in touch in a few days time to gather your feedback.